identify the unit circle. Why do we need this unit circle? What is it going to help us find? But before we do that, I have first a warm up that you don't have. A quick review because it's on Tuesday's quiz, something like this. Okay. Um, Ferris wheel has a diameter of 30 feet. It rotates two revolutions a minute. Find the linear speed in miles per hour. So we got to do a bunch of converting, but what do we got to convert first? Yeah, we need to take two. Right now it is revolutions per minute, right? Good job. We got to change it to radians. So what do we need to do? Nice. Everybody remembering this? Okay. So now we have four pi radians per minute. And we could just keep going, but I'm going to write down that that's our angular velocity. Okay. So to get into miles per hour, is miles per hour an angular or linear velocity? No way. Angular is only in radians, right? If you're talking miles, that's distance, so it's linear. So this is a linear that we're looking for. How do you get to linear? Times the radius. What is the radius? That's a little tricky. Yeah, if the diameter is 30, the radius is 15. All right, so I have 4 pi radians per minute times 15 feet. Okay, are we going to be done? This is going to just go away, but it wants what? Miles per hour. Trying to be a little tricky here. So what conversions do we need? Okay, so feet needs to go on the bottom, miles on the top. Kayvon knows one mile is 5,280 feet. Um, if I put that question on the quiz, I'd probably put the conversion there too, because some of you don't know that one. Um, feet cancels. Now we have miles and minutes. We need, yes, minutes needs to go on top. And we need to end up with hours. And one hour is 60 minutes. Minutes divides out. Okay. So we have all this stuff on the top. And the only thing we have to divide by is the 5280. Somebody type in 4 times pi times 15 times 60. It's all the way across the top. And then we're dividing by a 5280. I got 2.14. Anybody else get that? Okay. So around 2.1 miles an hour is all the faster that feet is turning on that Ferris wheel. Any questions? All right, I don't think the one on the quiz has quite that many conversions, quite that tricky. All right, the next prerequisite skill we need today is we need to review our special right triangles, and that's what I gave you a separate worksheet for. I was just going to do it up here, but some of you kind of tend to zone out when I just do examples up here. So I went ahead and printed the worksheet. It's back by the door. Um, the isosceles right triangle means you have a 45, 45, 90, right? Because isosceles means two sides are the same. So this is developed by doing Pythagorean theorem. X squared plus X squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So you'd have 2X squared equals the hypotenuse squared. And I don't care if you don't write this down, guys. This is for your own benefit, this worksheet. So the square root of X squared would be X. You can't have a negative, so you don't have to worry about that. Square root of 2. So that's the hypotenuse. That's where the pattern comes from, just so you know. Okay? But this is the pattern that you should have memorized. So on this figure, if one of the legs is 14, what do we know? The other leg is 14, and the hypotenuse is 14 squared to 2. Could everybody do that one? If you were given that basic where the two legs are the same, 
you just have to answer in radical. You can't just do Pythagorean theorem and give me a decimal, okay? Um, number three, okay? If you have a 45, then it means it's a isosceles. So both of these are the same. So in theory, you could do some algebra. But if this is seven squared to two, the pattern says each of these are just what? Okay. Now they get a little bit trickier. If this leg is 10 squared to 10 over two, the other leg is also square root of 10 over two. And what do we do to get the hypotenuse? Yeah, we multiply by root two. So square root of 10 over two times the square root of two would be square root of 20 over two, but 20 is four times five, and the square root of four is two, so that'll divide out the two in the denominator. So it's just square root five. So these were ugly, and this one was a little bit nicer looking, not much. But Now, when I look at that, I have a hard time realizing that the hypotenuse is longer. I'd have to type it in the calculator, because when I look at it, this seems like a bigger number to me, but that's just my little pea brain. Okay, over here, this is, hypotenuse is supposed to have a square root of 2 on it, right? It doesn't. It's hiding. It's in disguise. Do you remember what you had to do here? Yes, this side is equal to this number. So x square root of 2 equals 2 to find the missing legs. You divide by square root of 2. And what happens when you divide by square root of 2? Yep, square root of 2 over square root of 2. So you end up with 2 square root of 2 over 2, which is just square root of 2. That was a lot of work for. All right, tell you what, flip to the back, find a 45, 45, 90, or two or three, and do them quick. You can check your answers at the bottom. Everybody doing okay? Anybody have one they need me to, or one that looks ugly? All right, can we go ahead and talk about the other pattern? Okay, the other pattern comes from an equilateral triangle. If you have, hang on. If you have an equilateral triangle, all the sides are the same. Remember I talked about this briefly the first day of the semester. Rather than calling them x, x, and x, we call them 2x. Just because when I cut it in half, this will be a 1x. All right. So this hypotenuse is going to be twice as long as this short leg that is opposite of a 30-degree angle. So this is called the short leg. It's x. The hypotenuse is 2x. The long leg, if I took the hypotenuse and I squared it, it would equal the leg squared plus the missing leg squared. Well, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. If I subtracted 1x squared, over here I'd have 3x squared. And then when I square rooted, I'd have an x and a square root of 3. I went through that really messy because I didn't have room, but you remember that pattern? The long leg is x square root of 3. Now, students, I think, have trouble with this pattern, first of all, because it's got it's just kind of messy. But a lot of us forget that square root of 3 is actually shorter than 2. Okay, square root of 3 is like 1.7, okay? Everybody wants to put that in the wrong spot. All right, so 7 is real basic. If the long leg is 7 square root of 3, then the short leg is what? 
Yes, because x square roots of 3. And I'm not using these x and y. I'm just using my pattern. So this one would be 7, and this would be twice as long or 14. Could you do that one on the quiz? Okay, 8 is also easy. What's happening here? The short leg is 4. Long leg, which is across from the 60, would be 4 squared to 3, and the hypotenuse would be 8. Okay, number 9, they give us the what? Hypotenuse. What do we have to do to get to the short leg? So I'm just going to write 11 halves. I don't care if you use a decimal, but it's really not proper to use a decimal with a radical. I don't know why. So I'm just going to leave it a fraction because this side over here is going to be the short leg times the square root of 3. All right, this is the icky one that no one wants to have to do because hidden inside of this is a what? Square root of 3, right? This is the short leg times the square root of 3. So what do we have to do? So 13 divided by the square root of 3 will give us the short leg, which is V. I'm not using X because there's a V on this picture. So 13 over square root of 3 times square root of 3 over square root of 3 is 13 square roots of 3 over 3. That's a lovely number. What do we have to do to get the hypotenuse? Multiply by 2 or double it. What happens when we multiply by 2? Yeah, it's 2 over 1, so it's just 26 square roots of 3 over 3. We just double the top and the number outside. Okay, find two or three 30, 60, 90s on the back and see if you can do them. Check your answers at the bottom. See if there's an ugly one you need me to talk about. Are we good? Nobody's got one they need me to go over? All right, so those were our warm-ups for today. There are, there's a 30, 60, 90, and a 45, 45, 90 question on the trig review section of the quiz, on the special right triangle section of the quiz Tuesday. All right, so today we have found trig values using the ratios of right triangles. Today we're going to talk about reference angles and then we're going to talk about using the unit circle to find trig values of all six functions. Um, it's really important that you know these x over r, y over r definitions. Are they on your peach, peach sheet, though? Are they on the peach sheet with the r or not? On the back of the peach sheet at the top? Are they? x over r, y over r? Okay. It will be much faster if you memorize them, but they're there to help if you get confused, okay? They're especially useful for the quadrantal angles. All right, so sine is y, cosine is x. We talked about this in terms of the unit circle yesterday, right? Cosine, sine, everybody good? Alphabetical order, x, y, all right? So reference angles are always the angle to the nearest x-axis. You probably had a teacher that referred to it at some point as the bow tie. Okay, so if we have an angle in the first quadrant, anywhere in the first quadrant, it can even be way up here, you have to draw the triangle we're going to use back to the x-axis, not over here to the y, 
And the reference angle we're going to use is the angle it makes in here with this x-axis. Has everybody heard of the bow tie before? Okay. So if you are in quadrant four somewhere, you draw your triangle and you talk about this is the acute angle it makes with the x-axis. So the reference angles, okay. Um, the second thing we're going to talk about is finding the trig function and then using the quadrants. We talked about this yesterday, but because X and Y are both positive in the first quadrant, all the functions are positive. Because, what? X is negative. Nice slide I found, huh? X is negative in the second quadrant here. Okay. So the cosine is negative, the sine is positive, and the tangent is also going to be negative. The tangent is y over x. So the only thing that's positive in that quadrant is sine as its reciprocal. That's where you get that S for all students take calculus. You've got to remember, it doesn't do any good to remember all students take calculus if you don't know what that means, okay? What does the T stand for here? Okay, but what about the tangent? Yes, that's what's positive, okay? And that's because y over x, because they're both negative, that would become a positive. And y is negative in this quadrant. That makes the sine negative, and the cosine is the only thing that's positive. Are we good on those? Okay. All right, reference angles. I'm going to kind of skip to this because when I talked about it a second ago, you seem to be okay with this. They get all complicated here. They say, you know, if you're in this quadrant, you subtract from this, blah, blah, blah. And here's the definitions in radians, but we're just going to work with them. All right. So sketch each angle. If you were to sketch a 330, starting from what's called the uh, initial position or the starting side here, it would end in which quadrant? Four. Okay, so somewhere in quadrant four. This is 330 degrees around here. But we need the reference angle, which is the angle it makes with the positive x-axis in here. So we need to figure out when we do this. This is 360 degrees to here, right? If we backed up how much if we only went 330? Everybody okay with that? Where we got that number? That's all it asks for here. So the reference angle is 30 degrees. All right. If the angle is in degrees, you can answer in degrees. But if the angle's in radians, you have to answer in radians. You could do that by changing it to degrees and then back to radians. It's just not the way I would normally do it. And I want to encourage you to try to think with fractions a little bit more. All right. This, some of you probably do have to change the degrees to understand where this is, but what is a pi over 4? You know that much? Yeah, what's pi over 4? It's a fourth of the way to 180, so it's 45. Is everybody okay with that? So I'm going negative 3 of those. Well, there's a pi over 4. There's another 45. There's another 45. Okay. So negative 3 pi over 4 takes me to here. Now, because we just discussed the degrees, you probably know the reference angle. Reference angles are always positive. Okay, The reference angle is in here, and it's we just talked about it in degrees. It would be how much? If this was 345s, what's going to take you the rest of the way here? The reference angle in here would be 45 degrees. But what is this? That's pi, right? Or 180? So we need the difference between these two to fill in what the reference angle is. If you had 4 pi over 4 and negative 3 pi over 4, this would be 1 pi over 4 is going to be our reference angle. Okay, let's go with what I know most of you are going to do. How many of you are going to change it to degrees? 
I'm going to let you even have your reference sheet this day. So you could just look at your reference sheet. Um, it's negative 135. If you look at your unit circle, 3 pi over 4 is 135. Yes, did I do that right? And it's negative. Okay. So if you go here, a negative 135, this is 180. Do 180 minus 135, this would be a 45 degree angle, but you do have to change your answer back to radians. So you could just look at your unit circle, right? Say 45 is called pi over 4. Everybody good? All right, 9 pi over 6 is a dumb number. Why is that dumb? Yeah, it reduces. What goes in 9 and 6? So we have 3 pi over 2. Okay, we're supposed to draw it. It's positive. Where does it stop? Yeah, what is 3 pi over 2? Well, pi over 2 is a 90, right? So three of them takes me right to here. It's 270 degrees, but we're supposed to draw it. So it ends here. Now, does this have a reference angle? Yeah. What's the reference angle? The angle to the nearest x axis would be 90. But it doesn't actually have a reference angle. We just call it a quadrantal angle. I didn't put that on the... There's not one on the one that asks you to find a reference angle is not quadrantal on the quiz. There's just one in degrees and one in radians, I think, that asks you to find the reference angle. Actually, there might be more than one of one of them because um there might be one that goes around more than once. Eleven pi over six. If you want to change that to degrees, can I help you do a little mental math real quick? Pi is exactly what? 180. 180 divided by 6 is 30. 11 times 3 is, add that 0 is, okay, just just trying to help you. 330, I, did, I feel like we did 330 already, did we? Okay. But the answer is not the same because what? Yeah. So we need this remaining angle in here, which was 30 degrees, but you have to convert it and tell me that's pi over 6 radians. You don't have to label it. You just have to tell me the reference angle is pi over 6. Yes? No, not at all. It's a rough sketch. I'm great. 165, guys, what quadrant? Stops in quadrant 2. What is the, this is actually theta. What is the reference angle in here that it makes? Okay, the angle it makes is the rest of the way to 180. So 180 minus 165. Oh my goodness, I keep writing the wrong Greek letter there. Is 15. All right, negative 5 pi over 9. Most of you switch that to degrees first. Let me help you with the mental math again. What's pi? 180. What's 180 divided by 9? 20 times 5? Yes. So this is negative 100 degrees. And you can use a calculator. But it is negative 100. So the picture would go this way and stop just into this quadrant. So what's the reference angle? Yes, the reference angle is the rest of the way here. This is 180. So if this is negative 100, the angle in here is 80. Uh-oh. I'm going to get it wrong because what do I forget? It's got to be in radians. Yep, I should have written it here as negative 5 pi over 9. Okay, so to change it back into radians, if we do pi over 180, we get... 8 18 which reduces by 2 to 4 ninths. Does that make sense to anybody? This is pi, right? So if this was negative 5 ninths, this would have to be positive 4 ninths so that it added up to 9 ninths. All right. I really wish we were all more comfortable with fractions. All right. The next section just talks about when they give us an ordered pair. 
and they say it's a point on the terminal side, meaning that's where it stops measuring, starting in standard position. All this, this we've done these, but what's going to change is there are going to be negatives involved. So we're going to have to find all six trig functions. So if we have an ordered pair of 2, negative 5, we're going 2 to the right and down 5. Okay, then what? We always draw our triangle back to the positive x-axis. And the angle we're talking about is in here. This is our theta. What do we have to do first? Pythagorean theorem. 2 squared plus negative 5 squared is 29, right? So square root of 29. No one's going to give me a negative on the radius, right? Ever. Okay? The radius or the hypotenuse on the unit circle or any circle drawn on the coordinate plane is positive. The only signed numbers could be your x and y values. All right. Um, ba, 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 ba. What are we supposed to find? All six? So oh, great fun. Sign. Opposite over hypotenuse, or I would prefer you were thinking about y over r now. So this is your y because it's the up and down, and this is your x because it was across, or it's x, y from up here. So we get negative 5 over square root of 29, which rationalizes to what? Yeah, nice discussing negative 5 square root of 29 over 29. Now hopefully you showed some work. Because what is the reciprocal of that going to be? Cosecant would be, we could flip it over right back here, right? Or hypotenuse, or r over y, square root of 29 over negative 5. Don't forget your signs. When you're all done at the end of the problem, it would make really good sense to do the all students take calculus and make sure that in this quadrant, what's happening? Yes. So what's going to be the only positive function in this quadrant? Cosine. Yep. Cosine and secant. Perfect. Okay. Cosine is x over r. So it's going to be 2 over square root of 29 or 2 square root of 29 over 29. Secant would also be positive. It would just be square root of 29 over 2, because I can go back here and flip it over. And tangent. How do we find tangent, guys? The definition I'd like you to have in your head is y over x. So it's what? Negative 5 over 2 and cotangent 2 over negative 5. Okay. I vote we don't do all of these on number eight, but can we just draw it and make sure we know how to do that part, okay? We would go left 12 and up four. So x is negative 12 and y is four. If we do Pythagorean theorem, I'm using h for hypotenuse, like r for radius, I guess I could have used. Uh, Okay, now I just have a blob. We'll pretend that's an R. 144 and 16. 160. Oh, is R. I already square rooted. Okay, um, which would be 16 times 10. My goodness, that's a 6. Okay. If I'm going to print these notes for someone, I should probably make it readable, right? This was r squared, square root of 160, square root of 16, square root of 10 would be 4 root 10. I tell you a shortcut, but I don't want to confuse anybody. You could actually divide all those numbers by 4 right now, and that would make your reducing easier later. But could everybody find all of the functions for this angle in here? Do you need me to go through any of them? We're good? Okay, but um, which ones will be positive in that quadrant? Sine.
sine would be positive and cosecant would be positive. Everything else wouldn't be negative, right? Everybody okay? All right, now we're going to talk about using our unit circle. Deep breath. Ready? Let's try this. Using your unit circle, we're going to talk about those X, Y, R definitions. Everywhere on the unit circle, what is true? R is? Yes. And what value is R? Because it is a unit circle. One. R is one. On the unit circle, R is always one. So if we go to 270, what's the ordered pair down here, guys? I went, to, oh, don't even look. Look up here. I went across zero and down one. So the cosine is X over R, or it's just the X of the ordered pair, right? So the cosine would be zero. Okay, cosecant pi over two. No. Pi over two is up here. Would you have got that right? The ordered pair is across zero and up one. Cosecant is what? Okay, it's not the opposite. It's the reciprocal of sine. So it's R over Y. What's the Y value? One. So it's one over one, which is one. Okay, the cotangent of negative 90. Negative 90 degrees is down here. So we're back at zero, negative one. Cotangent. Well, tangent is y over x or sine over cosine. So cotangent is x over y or cosine over sine, which is zero over negative one. Guys, I don't know how to help you, but when the zero is underneath, it is undefined. Cotangent, we good, is x over y. Yep, tangent would be the other way around. Tangent is undefined. But zero divided by negative one, guys, is zero. And I can't tell you, that's like the most missed thing when we get to this on the quiz is people telling, first of all, people will try to leave it like this, and I'm going to mark that wrong every time. You have to tell me, is that zero or is that undefined, okay? And when the zero is divided by something, it's good. I can take zero pizzas and divide it among seven people. You each get zero, okay? I can't divide by zero because this is true, right, guys? Uh... 2 equals 6 divided by 3. So 2 times 3 equals 6. Well, if I do 7 divided by 0, that means 0 times something has to be 7. Is that ever going to work? No. So you can't divide by 0, but you can put a 0 on the top. All right, before I go any further, real fast. Commercial break. How do you divide fractions? So three-fourths times four-sevenths. Because they had the same denominator, you ended up with three over seven, okay? Because these were the same, you wound up with three over seven. So this question, squared is three over two. If you flip the second one over, these divide out, and you ended up with squared is three over negative five because they had the same denominator. Because that's going to happen when we do it on our unit circle in a second. If I had this... I'm going to have 2 thirds times 3 over square root of 3. These are going to divide out. And then are we getting good at telling me that's 2 squared to 3 over 3? Okay. Just practicing because now this is where we're supposed to do this without a unit circle using our special right triangles. But I really don't care. 5 pi over 3. Pi over 3 is 60 degrees times five is 300. So if we went around to 300 degrees, left over would be 60, right? Okay. If you put your 30, 60, 90 stuff on here, you know what, let's practice what we did yesterday. Which of these is a bigger number if that's 60 degrees, the X or the Y? You went down further, right? Because this was 60, not 30. 
So you went down further. So the down number is negative square root of 3 over 2, and the number to the right is 1 half. All right, so what's the sign? Cosine sine. The sine is just negative 3 over 2. All right, cosecant of 210. Well, 210 is how much past 180? Minus 180 is 30 degrees. Okay, now you have those 30, 60, 90 numbers again, but this time you went over further and down a little bit. So you went over square root of 3 over 2 and down a half, but what's true in that quadrant? They're both negative. They're both negative. Okay, cosecant. Which one is cosecant the flip of? So this is 1 over sine. The sine was the y value. So the cosecant is what? Yeah, it's, it's this upside down, so it's just negative 2. Got it? Reciprocal function, you got to flip it over. All right, now we have a different special right triangle, I'm thinking, because negative 315 is how much short of 360? Okay, do you remember your 45, 45, 90 ordered pairs? They're all what? Square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. This just wants the cos, and we're in quadrant 1, so it's positive. This just wants the cosine, so it's the x value. Square root of 2 over 2 is the cosine. I don't see anybody writing. Do you not have those? Okay. Those were 9, 10, and 11. We good? All right. So now we're just going to use our unit circle, which we did on the last one because we were too lazy to do all our special right triangle stuff. Remember, guys, tangent here, it says down here that we have cosine and sine. When we use the unit circle, the radius is 1 everywhere on there. So we can shorten this from y over r to just being y. So the sine is y, the cosine is x. So how would we find tangent again? It's y over x or sine over cosine. Are you going to get that when we have to do those? Because this is like a huge thing on the next quiz. There's a lot of questions on these. So here was tangent of 5 pi over 3. You already have this one. Let me just go through it real fast. 5 pi over 3 is 180 divided by 3 is 60 times 5 is 300. So it was in this quadrant. It's a 60 degree reference angle. So I went down a whole bunch. So the down was negative square root of 3 over 2, and the over was 1 half. I did not draw that well. You could look at your unit circle. But then it wants tangent. Okay, guys, quick, pay attention. Y over X. There's a reason Hofbauer did this a minute ago. Do you remember what happened when we did this? The denominators canceled, right? So the Y over the x, because the denominators were the same when we flipped it over, they divided out. So we just wound up with negative square root of 3 over 1 or negative square root of 3. Okay. I don't know if it's done on your paper. Is it done on your paper for you? Okay. All right. So here we go. Got your unit circle at hand? Because these should be super fast. Find 7 pi over 6. Pi over 6 is 30, so 7 of them is 210. Find it there, 7 pi over 6. And the cosine is which ordered pair? It's the x, so we put negative square root of 3 over 2, and we're done. Do you see why you have to be paying attention? Because if you just look up here, it's magic, right? I just pulled a number out of thin air. you got to be looking at the unit circle with me. Okay, negative 3 pi over 4. What is pi over 4, guys? 45. 45. 
So three of them in the negative direction would be one, two, three of them. So I'm here. Okay. Secant. Well, secant is the flip of cosine. So I'm supposed to flip this over. I'd have two over the square root of two, and it's supposed to be negative. Now what? Yeah, and what happens? Two root two over two is just root two and it's negative. So that was a pain in the neck, but could you have figured it out? All right, tangent at pi over two. I hope eventually you get good and know that pi over two is just 90, right? Tangent is y over x, so it's one over zero undefined. When the zero is underneath, it's undefined. If you leave one over zero, I'm marking it wrong. You've got to tell me it's undefined. And please write undefined, not a circle with a line through it, because some people use that as a zero. Okay, I'm trying to get you some practice here. 180 divided by 3 is 60 times 4 is 240. So it's down here, 4 pi over 3. Okay, here's the ordered pair. Cotangent is what? X over, y. X over Y, if you think of it that way, or it's cosine over sine. So it's negative one half over or divided by negative square root of three over two. Do you remember what we just talked about? What happens to the divisors? Yeah. So we end up with negative over negative is going to be positive. One over square root of three, which is Okay, they get tricky, don't they? This is not just looking at the unit circle and picking out cosine or sine. There's all six functions on here. Where's negative five pi over four? Guys, those of you who don't like me tangents, degrees, and all this business, if you just look at the unit circle and this is positive five pi over four, right? Yeah. Negative five pi over four means it's the same amount this way, okay? So we're here. I need the cosecant, which is the flip of which one? Sine, which is positive. Remember what happened when we rationalized that? It just became root 2 because it was 2 root 2 over 2. And then this. All right, cosine at pi. So it's just the x value. Okay. Your assignment, guys, is on your. This is the last thing that's on the homework check. Okay. Page 251. Yes, the homework check is due Tuesday, but questions tomorrow if you don't get some of these. I know there's more than 10 here, but they're all they're doing is looking at the unit circle. You know what I'm saying? Cosine of pi over 2, sine of 300. Not like they think you don't have to write any work for most of them. Thank you.